it is interesting to me that uh, people all the time are telling me to relax, take it easy, don't be so serious, don't worry about it, we got it covered. You know, you don't have to be that serious. After all, you're forgiven, you know, you have grace. So what if you maybe indulge once in a while, you know, kind of like give in and, you know, hey, it's just, it's just a little weed. I mean, come on now, everybody's doing it. Why not you? You don't have to be that serious about it. It's not going to kill you or anything. You know, people tell me all kinds of things. Sometimes people tell me, hey, you know what, let's go party, you know. You're missing out. You don't get it. You know, you you could be enjoying yourself. You know, you could be like partying down, like boogie nights. Got to get down, got to get around. Hey, dance with the boogie, get down. You know, party, get drunk. You know, have a good time. You know, it's okay. Loosen up, lighten up. People tell me that. People say, no, nah, you don't want to talk too much about religion. That's for Sunday. You know, you don't want to get too carried away. I mean, it's good for Sunday, but, you know, that's after football. You know, after football season, then it's good to go to church. You know, everybody should go to church once in a while, but don't take it too serious. I mean, you don't want to ruin your life, do you? You don't want to mess up what you got going. I mean, after all, you know, you don't want to be one of those, like, missionaries or something. You know, go to Africa or something or... You know, you might get killed, you know, for your faith. I mean, you don't want to wind up that way, do you? People tell me, hey, you know what? If you just picked up another job, you could invest in the market. You know, you could really make recoup on your investment. Right now, you could buy into Facebook. You could buy into Google. You could buy into Twitter. Man, you could make a lot of money. You know, it's easy money. We could, you know, you could go out and then you could get all these things, jet skis and Harleys. You could go on those Christian cruises then. You know, you could be a, a speaker and go around and charge money for what you're doing. You know, why do you want to be so serious? Why do you take literal the Word of God? You don't have to be so literal about it. You can charge people. You can get some money out of it. You could make some money. You know, you could put some bucks into it, you know, and you could get back some investment, you know, dollars, and then you could go and be even bigger, more popular, more like the big guys. You know, people tell me that I'm too serious about Facebook, you know, that when I read a comment and it's a lie, I say, false. When I see a picture that's like a complete distortion of God or the Bible, I say, no, not true. When people put lies in the place of truth, I say, false. When there is fallacy being presented as though it were accurate, I say, no, it's not. And you know, it's funny because people say, you don't have to defend the president. After all, he's going to be out of office soon and we're going to get rid of him. So let's just lie about him. Let's just make everyone hate him. Let's just treat him as though he were the worst ungodly person in the world. After all, he's only the president. Never mind that God put him in charge as an authority over us. We don't want any king, but we want our own authority. We want to pick our own person. We don't want the one we chose already. After all, we don't want to be owning up to what we have done. It wasn't my vote that put him in office, so I'm going to lie about him now to get him out of office. People tell me all kinds of things that I take too serious. Do you know why? Readiness. God called to him, and he said, Here am I. Exodus 3.4 When God speaks, many of us are like people in a fog, and we give no answer. 
Moses' reply to God revealed that he knew where he was and that he was ready. Readiness means having a right relationship to God and having the knowledge of where we are. We are so busy telling God where we would like to go, yet the man or woman who is ready for God and his work is the one who receives the prize when the summon comes. Are you ready? Have you prepared yourself? Are you doing and getting ready for what God wants you to do? Yet the man or woman who is ready for God and his work is the one who receives the prize when the summons comes. We wait with the idea that some great opportunity or something sensational will be coming our way. When it does not come, we are quick to cry out, Oh, but, 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 but here am I. I'm ready. Give me my big giant mega ministry. Give me my big thing to do. Whenever we sense that Jesus Christ is rising up to take authority over some great task, we're there. We're with him. We're all the way. Hey, I'll give you 100%, God, as long as you're heading for that giant, big box, giant item to do. But we are not ready for some obscure duty, are we? We don't want to be too serious about what Jesus said. Readiness for God means that we are prepared to do the smallest thing or the largest thing. It makes no difference. It means we have no choice in what we want to do, but that whatever God's plans may be, we are there and ready. Whether in the smallest of things you're literal or in the biggest of things you're literal. If you are not literal, then you are not literal on anything. It's all or nothing. Everything that you do and say is all or nothing. God does not say, oh, well, when it's big enough, get involved. Or when it's small enough, it's okay. After all, it's just a little white lie, and it's very little. Just a little lie. You know, a little lie doesn't hurt, but a big lie does. Because the big lie will be found out. The little lie, nobody will ever find out. Yeah, they will. Yes, they will. Because they already know. It means that we have no choice in what we want to do, but that whatever God's plans may be, we are there and we have made ourselves ready to do, irregardless of the cost. Whenever any duty presents itself, we hear God's voice as our Lord heard his Father's voice, and we are ready for it with the total readiness of our love for him. Jesus Christ expects us to do with just as his Father did with him, crucified him, and allowed him to die. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to be a Christian? Because if you're not, quit pretending. Don't go there. Go get ready and get your act together. Get your life together. Go do your sin if you feel like you have to sin. Go party if you feel like you got to party. Go run your political gamut until you burn out in the, each one of those and you find that there is no satisfaction in what you're doing. Then come back and try to be a Christian. Because you see, until you put those things in their proper place, you're not a Christian. You're an imitator of those whom God has called, whom God has chosen, whom God is making ready to be used by him. Now, it could be a little old lady walking across the street, and you may be the one to help her. But you see, if you're always consumed with the idea that you need to pick and choose what it is you want to do, you've already failed the test that God has required of you. Because in utmost for his highest, which is what we're reading from, we're always choosing to do all or nothing. Get in or get out. Get right or get left. Because you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. You don't get to play games lukewarm. You're either hot or you're cold. So I would rather you, frank, frankly, go out and sin or get right and get on with it. Because playing the game is playing a game and God doesn't play games you see you're affecting people around you with who you claim to be and they're all watching you they're listening to you they're keeping track of exactly who you are and what you do and how you do it to see if you really are one of those Christians that are real or if you're just one of those other phonies that they know all about the choice is yours what are you about what are you doing? Are you ready?
Jesus Christ expects us to do with us just as his father did with him. He can put us wherever he wants, in pleasant duties or in menial ones, because our union with him is the same as his union with the father, that they may be one just as we are one. John 17, 22. Be ready for the sudden surprise visits of God at any point in time in the midst of your sin or in the midst of your righteousness when you are doing the best you can or the worst you can Jesus said to Jerusalem weeping over it if you had known the hour of your visitation I would have drawn you unto myself and gathered you as a mother hen gathers its chicks but you would not for you recognize not the hour of your visitation do you know that God will visit you in your life Bluntly. Do you know that? Factually. Are you ready for it? Personally. Because Jesus will come to you in an hour of visitation. Are you ready to hear his voice? Are you ready to walk with God? Are you ready to find out all this was not religion and all this was not about faith? The bottom line, it was about obedience. It was about you finding out that God is real. And whether you chose to listen to him or not was your choice. Did you hear him when he called? Did you follow him what he said to do? Or did you disobey and run away to go play the games you want to do? So I say unto you, be real. If you're not into the utmost for his highest, if you're not willing to give all you got, get out. Go get done with what you need to do to prove to yourself that you're not a phony and that you're coming back willing to die for God. Because until you're willing to do that, you can't really live for Him. Because those that claim that they are living for Him are willing to die for Him. And they must be willing to give up all that they have in order to follow Him. A ready person never needs to get ready. He is ready. Think of the time we waste trying to get ready once God is called. The burning bush is a symbol of everything that surrounds the person who is ready, and yet it is on fire with the presence of God himself. We sing a song that says, People get ready, Jesus is coming, soon we'll be going home. It's too late. You're ready or you're not. You've already made that determination just by where you are, how you are, right now in this moment. You know if you're ready or not. Ready or not, here I come. And God sees it all. The point is, will you change your ways? Will you direct your life? Will you quit offering up the excuses and admit to yourself, I'm not ready? Because if you were, we wouldn't be having this discussion. We wouldn't even be talking about getting ready. We wouldn't even talk about being ready. We would say, here am I. I'm ready. Let's go. Whatever it costs, I'm willing to pay the price because that's what salvation message is supposed to be. Come, Jesus said to his disciples, follow me. And they got up and left everything behind and followed him. Whether it be Matthew, whether it be Mark, Luke, John, any of them. Whether it be you. According to the word of God in the book of Revelation, God has already spoken and said, come. According to the word of God in the book of Revelation, the Spirit has already spoken and said, Come. According to the word of God, the Father has already sent out his gospel in the form of Jesus Christ, and everyone knows it and has heard it at some point in time in their life. And the word declares, Come. Are you willing to come unto Jesus? Or are you just playing the game and not willing to follow him even in shame as well as in glory. For until you do, until you're willing to suffer as well as be exalted, you're really not ready, are you?